Hey, welcome to the show and I'm sorry I haven't posted in a few weeks. I've been on holidays here in Miami and I've been at the pool. I've been playing with the kids. I've been um, riding bicycles and stuff like that. There hasn't been a lot of news these past weeks. So now that there's a bit more, I'm making this video. So the first news which were sad was that Fuji has discontinued their film 160 NS in sheet format in probably the whole world. So that is the sad news. They had also uh, stopped making multi-packs for their superior films and other films. So basically that means that you can still buy the unit, but you can't buy the packs, which usually had a discount price. In the States, they've announced that they're gonna continue making those multi-packs. So if you live in the United States or you can get hold of the film here, um, you can continue buying it. On a different note, Fuji came out with a little interview or press release talking about the state of film, saying that, you know, the industry had, as we all know, gone down a lot, but basically it's starting to go up. They're finding there's a lot of use on disposable cameras. And um, they also talk about the instant film, which they kind of don't comment, like they don't say it's actually like analog film because people take it as an instant reward, kind of like digital photography or your phone photography. So it's an interesting article, I'll link it down below, so keep an eye on it. Also, Kodak has an interview with his CEO talking about the state of film and how they're gonna continue making it. The best parts from that article is basically that the new CEO is committed to continuing film. He actually walked into Kodak and they were planning on dropping film altogether, which I had never heard about. And um, they finally are profitable as a film manufacturer, even though they do many other things. And that's good news, so I'll leave a link to that below too. Also, Japan Camera Hunter, as I've said, has come out with um, its own film, the Street Pan 400, and he gave the developing times on his website, but his um, boxes that carry the film have a print inside and they did a misprint. So if you're developing that Street Pan shot at 400 in HC 110 from Kodak, Dilution B, it actually states 10 and a half minutes, but it's not that time. It's five minutes, like he says on his website. This is minor um, news, but I still think it's important because that's the developer I use. So if I would have bought that film, I would have had that problem. Photographer Nate Matos, which basically has another YouTube channel and you might know him from PDX, um, actually found out this problem and developed this film, I think at 10 minutes and 30 seconds. So. Sadly, that's not how you should do it. You should do five. Also, another news, um, there's this photographer's cookbook, which is not the darkroom cookbook, which is, or something like that. I don't know the name right now, but there's a photographer cookbook, which is actually a real food cookbook, talking about the favorite re recipes from famous photographers. They've been doing this uh, for the last like 30 years. So they finally came out with the book. So if you wanna cook like your favorite photographer, you know what to buy. Also, just before I went on my holidays, I was waiting for Impossible 8x10 film to be back in stock in Europe, and finally it's back in stock. So you can again buy 8x10 color film. They haven't said it is the new generation chemicals they're using in their pack film, but I hope it is. And as soon as I can, I'll buy some packs. I'll leave the link below. Hopefully they'll have it in stock and keep on you know, producing it as long as it's getting used. Also, German company Jobo has announced um, their CPE-3, which I mentioned here. They've leaked a picture and they've given a price. So it's like 1,200 euros for the unit, taxes included, um, without the lift. And uh, it's uh, like 1,500 with the lift. It's basically, as I had said, exactly the same as the CPE-2, which is like 20 or 30 years old. The only thing that's gotten stronger is the, um, the engine. So those units are still going strong. So if they made it better, this means that even though it is a pricey piece of equipment, this will last for more than 30 years, I hope. They have also come out with um, a few cheap kits to develop your own film, which they've called something like the S, M, and L. The S comes with a small tank and you know the measuring cup and all that to develop small batches of film. The M is the same, but a little higher uh, tank, so you can do more than one roll. And then they've come out with the L that's a bigger tank and also has the rollers to do it on the table, which I think is a great solution to developing your own film at home, black or white or color. Um, large format camera maker Svedovsky has also come out with an 11 by 14 
camera, which I'll leave a link below to his Facebook page, but he's producing 11 by 14, 14 by 17, and other cameras. So if you're curious and you're in Europe, they're pretty affordable, they're easy to get, and um, they look pretty nice. So if you do want to check one out, just check the link below. On the crowdfunding news, there's a new um, project from Impossible, which is not really impossible. It's a filmmaker that wants to make a documentary about um, Impossible and the, their story, how they overcame the um, Polaroid bankruptcy, how they did everything to keep on producing instant film to this day. It has like around a week more of funding. It's asking for like a hundred grand. Uh, sadly, it's only managed to um, fund to this day like seven to eight thousand, which means they probably won't be able to fulfill their Kickstarter but I hope they do pursue and finish that movie because I would be really interested in seeing it. So if you want to show support, please fund them and um, maybe we'll have a documentary about this history of um, Impossible. On the other side, uh, Kickstarters or Indiegogo campaign from Cinestill is uh, marching well. They've given a little update on their Instagram saying that they basically have been running the machines at Rochester. They moved all the machines to Rochester, which is where Kodak makes their film and they're already starting their batches of um, film there. The 4x5 and medium format is looking good, so hopefully they said they would probably be shipping their film before um, the end of August, which is like in two weeks. So hopefully we'll be able to buy this film locally as soon as they start producing on a regular basis. Also, in other news, uh, Italian filmmaker Ferrania, who still hasn't made any film, but they're going for it. Uh, has given a little update basically saying they finally have electricity running all the way to their their factory and that means they'll be able to start producing. They say the coding is working so that means they're also very close to starting to send their film to the backers. So that's all for today. It's August 16, 2016 from Miami. I hope you enjoy. See you in the next video.